Hi, I'm Michelle, and I'm going to start with some basic duck spare instructions. And one of the things that I want to start with is this isn't the first lesson because the first lesson would be downloading duck spare. And if you'd like to see that video, just um, leave a comment below. But as far as opening and closing, because the first time I used voiceover on my iPad, I almost wanted to throw the thing out the window because I couldn't turn it off. So I think it's really important to start with and know how to turn things on and to turn them off. So we're going to open Duxbury. And as you can see, we have this screen that pops up. So we have file. And if we hover over file, we have new, we have open, and we have exit. Everything else is grayed out. And if you want new, you can also they also offer you the shortcut control N open to open open your save documents control O exit alt F4 and then it also shows you all the your previously saved documents that that you've just finished working on. Edit view layout table document they're all grayed out so I can't select any of those. We have global we can set up the embosser, we can set up the printer, we can do our autosave options and default views and internationalization and fonts and view preferences, shortcut preferences, import options, word perfect importer, word importer, and formatted braille importer. Then if we go to help, we have help topics, translate help, favorite topics, what's new in this version, and this version is 12.3. If we need to register, we can register um, our software. We also can check for updates and it'll tell us about Duxbury. So what we're going to do, we are going to open a new file. And this window pops up. It'll have document type. Is it going to be a print or is it going to be a braille? It gives several templates to choose from, but since we are under the new UEB, we're going to go to UEB with Banner, and we're going to say OK. So now we have a document that we can start typing in. Now when I was first shown how to use Duxbury, my training, I don't know if you can hear my air quotes, but my training consisted of someone telling me, oh, just open a document, copy and paste, then put it, you know, paste it into Duxbury, push translate, and then just look at the bottom yellow line to make sure it's okay. That was the extent of it. And that was okay to get started, but there's lots more functionality that Duxbury can do. So if we're going to type in, we can just say the very beginning first lesson. Okay, and once we do that, we have our text. We can go to back to file. We have save and save as, we're not going to talk about that just yet, we can go to translate. So what it's done, the software program has translated exactly what I wrote in. And it has a contracted capital the, we have very, we have low form B, G, low form I N, 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 then I N G, we have the contraction first, and then we have L E S S O N period lesson. Well, if you and then down here at the bottom it says what I typed in, the very beginning first lesson. And as you can see that there is a spelling mistake. So I can fix that up here. I can't fix it down here in the yellow. I can only fix it down here. So I can just take out an extra N beginning. And there you have it. I can fix it. So typically, like I said, you saw where I fixed, where I had the spelling mistake. And one of the things that's one of the reasons why I don't typically do direct input into Duxbury, because it doesn't tell me I made a mistake. Where 
if I use Microsoft, it'll give me the little red squiggly line and I know to spell check. So now that we have our first document, we're going to go under File and we're going to save and we're going to save as and that's very important to save our information because we worked really hard on it, even though it's just one sentence. But our options are to save, save in a Duxbury. So dot DB, excuse me, dot DXB. We can also save in a version of um, 10.5 or earlier. So say if you're trying to communicate with somebody who has an earlier version of Duxbury, if you save it this way, they'll be able to open it because if you saved it as a, in 10 and 13, it's not going to be anyone with a lower version is not going to be able to open it. You could do formatted Braille US, USA encoding formatted braille local encoding you can do Duxbury coded braille and you also do refreshable braille so say if you're giving it to a student or a client that you're working with and you need to and they're going to open it on their refreshable braille you can save it in that format as well so what we're going to do we're going to just save it as a dot dxb we're going to give it a name Lesson, and we're going to save so that's all that we need to do we've opened our Duxbury a new a new page in Duxbury we've typed in our what we wanted to put in we've translated it we've saved it and then we're going to close so if this is something that you we're not gonna save oops and it gives you a second option. I just wanted to point that out when that when I save, it says save document untitled print document not saved. So it also gives you the option of saving what you wrote in print as well. I'm going to go no. So we've been able to open a document. We've typed in there. We've translated and now we've saved and closed. So that's all we're going to do for the first lesson and the way I want to arrange the lessons are small bites of information. So it'd be great if you watch the first one all the way through so each individual lesson but say if in three weeks you are like oh how do I format a running head well instead of having to watch an entire lesson or an entire series of lessons you can just watch that one. So each name is going to be specific to what we're learning. So I hope this was helpful and if it was please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions leave them in the box below and like and subscribe. Have a great night.